Welcome to the 24th hour of the Suicide Prevention Show. This is the end of this particular season. We have had 23 expert speakers. We have 23 excellent presentations, 23 stories that will melt your heart and inspire you to stay just one moment longer. That's the point of the summit, to inspire you to boldly go into your life so that you never need intervention, to inspire you to find joy every day, even if you struggle as my daughter does with suicidal thoughts, to inspire you to reach out one more time, to pause one more second, to wait and listen for the voice that just might cry out and say, please stay. So now we're gonna go into this movement, how to boldly stand up, speak out and launch a movement. And I so wanted to put in there, effectively launch a movement, how to stand up and effectively speak out and launch a movement. This concept that if you don't get an outcome, maybe we need to talk. And so I'm going to stop share and we're just going to chat. I didn't prepare a PowerPoint. Um, there is a website you can go to. If you have a mission, if you have a calling, if you have a message, we've got a three-day boot camp coming up. And you can join the three-day boot camp. It is a $47 buy-in for all three days, and it's virtual. You don't have to travel. And the sole purpose of the boot camp is to uncover your core four stories to help you build out a signature talk. We're not going to create your whole signature talk in three days. Oh, my God, that would be such a dream. It took me a lot longer than that to create mine. But what we will do is on day two, you'll take one of those core four stories and develop your seven minute mission launching main message. And you will not only develop it, you'll deliver it. Why? Because standing and delivering a seven minute main message can change the world. It can launch a movement. How do we know? The teen suicide prevention movement, this whole concept was birthed when my middle daughter, Stephanie, gave a seven minute talk at this event one year ago. It was August, 2019. It was a beautiful day. Oh my God, as an event host, in person, it was a wonderful day. Miracles were happening. Everything worked. The videographer was on time and set up with his cameras. The PowerPoint worked. Everything was sliding beautifully. The entrepreneurial women who had shown up for this day were engaged and enthusiastic and everyone was getting into that nervous, excited state that you get into when you're about to give a talk. I was super proud of my daughter. She had said, mom, what if I give a talk? See, the problem was that she wanted to solve is she was supposed to write a chapter for an inspirational book for teens. And she was totally stuck. You know, we call this writer's block in all caps. And so she's like, what if I stand up, give a seven minute talk at your meeting, at your event, because it was a three day event. She says, what if I do that? And then I get it transcribed and that'll be my chapter. It seemed like a good idea at the time. And she started her talk with a startling statistic, which is a great way, by the way, speaker note, this is a great way to start a short talk is with a startling statistic. And I was super proud right up until it landed in my brain. Her statistic was 3,000 a day 
3,000 a day was the number of teens who attempted to take their own lives every day. And that was just teens, just in the US, and just the ones who didn't die. Now, I was in the back of the room going, what? Huh? Not only did I not know she was going to talk on this topic, I had no clue the numbers were that high. And then she said, when I was 14, <gasps> and I stopped breathing and my brain shut down because here she was in the front of the room talking about her multiple suicide attempts as a teenager that I had lived through, but we hadn't talked about for two decades because why bring it up? Why, you know, I mean, I had sold myself on the idea that if she was getting professional help, and trust me, she got a lot of professional help. I had sold myself on the idea that if she was getting professional help, we didn't have to talk about it. And here she was talking about it in the front of the room. And then she said that she still struggled with suicidal thoughts. Just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, it got worse because I stopped breathing, my heart stopped beating, and my brain exploded. And the only question going on in my head was, how could I miss this? Again, I missed it before she attempted when she was 14. And apparently I had missed it right up until this age of 37. I mean, oh my God, I missed it. And I've been in this field. I'm a stress management consultant. I'm a transformative mediator. I'm certified in transformative business and mindset and all of these certifications that I had. And in that moment, I knew I was certifiable because I had a lot of certifications and zero willingness to connect with my daughter. But I didn't know that then. I didn't know I was avoiding a conversation. I did not know that the conversations we avoid are the ones that truly matter. It took many months. It took different mentors. It took being called out for being tactical and not vulnerable. And it took realizing that I just did not want to know. I did not want to know what could cause my daughter so much mental and emotional pain that she would think dying was better than living. But I had to find out. And the short list, the short list of what makes us at risk for suicide beyond a mental health diagnosis. Okay, I'm going to put mental health diagnoses, anything that is an at-risk situation into the realm of intervention, okay? But for the normal people, the people who are normal, they're happy, they're sometimes bored, they're sometimes grumpy, they're normal. That's 85% of the population. Suicide is not on their mind if they attempted, everyone in their world would be shocked, including them. That's about 70%. And then there's the 15% who have been struggling with negative thinking. It's not that they're thinking about suicide necessarily, not that they're seriously contemplating it, but they're afraid of it. They're afraid if they have a passing thought, oh, uh, maybe I don't want to live like this and I'm not going to do it anymore. By the way, that's a suicidal thought. And then they get scared that that thought might lead to another thought and that that thought might lead to action. And so they try not to think about it. They don't talk about it. They just try not to think about it. And the more they try not to think about it, the more they're actually doubling down on it. And if you've ever been to Vegas and you know what doubling down in, down is you're increasing your bet. What that means is that the more you try not to think about it, the more you're thinking about it and your subconscious mind notices. 
your subconscious mind is elegantly designed to bring you opportunities for what you think is important. Your subconscious mind knows what's important to you because it's what you think about. Oh, here's the secret. Your subconscious mind creates plans to get you what you want based on what you think about. So when you're trying not to think about suicide, when you're trying not to think about debt, when you're trying not to think about struggle, when you're trying not to think about strife, you're doubling down on it and your subconscious mind is elegantly programmed to create opportunities to get you more of it. You can see that this is the law of attraction in action in a way that the movie did not address clearly. At least not enough for the conversation that I wanted to have. All right, I lied. Right there, I just lied. This is not a conversation I wanna have. This is not something I wanna talk about. I didn't wanna talk about it 24 years ago when my daughter first attempted to take her own life. And I don't wanna talk about it now, but I must and we must. We must break the silence on this topic and start these conversations that are uncomfortable because the silence is killing us. So I want to open it up to you. I want to help you understand that if your life has been touched by suicide, you might have a message to bring to the world, whether it's you or someone you know. And if your life hasn't been touched by suicide and you want to just donate to the cause, I'm happy to drop that link, teensuicidepreventionsociety.org. That's how you get to the donation page. So Katie will make it a hyperlink. She, Katie is my tech support. She's also my oldest daughter, and I'm so grateful to have her in my life right now because she's keeping me sane. So she'll put that in the chat. And now let's talk about the rest of the message. What if you have a message? What if your life has been touched by suicide? What if your story could inspire someone else? So if you don't have a message, if you don't have a story, we might be done. You may not need to launch a mission. Go donate, be part of the solution. But if you've got a mission, raise your hand digitally. Tell me that you've got a mission. Let's talk about it. Let's figure out what's the best way to bring your mission into the world. Oh, I see a hand. It's Steve. Oh my God. All right. Thank you, Steve. I'm going to invite you to unmute. Where are you now? Okay. A lot. It moved. You, you put your hand away. So I can't, I don't know where you went. All right, there's your hand up. Thank you. Okay, so Steve, can you hear me now? I can hear you, yes. Steve, what's your mission in the world? <laughs> well, seven years ago, my life uh, came to a point where I didn't see, where I felt that it was time to close the book on my life. And it took me a number of years to get to a better place. And my mission in life is to help people find the story that keeps on giving so that they can help others who are facing their own dark nights of the soul. What? So you had your own dark night of the soul and you want to support people so that if they've had their own dark night of the soul, they know they're not alone. Absolutely, yes. How can we support you in this mission? That is a good question. Um, well, one, I'm looking for opportunities to tell my story 
to a larger audience to um, to spread the message of, of hope and light in the, the dark night. So that's one way. Awesome. Probably the primary way at this point. All right. So stages. So you can spread your message that just because you're down doesn't mean you're out. Right, and actually on the other side of that, just mm -hmm. because you're down, there's actually, the light on the other side is much, much greater than the pinpricks of light that you see in the dark night. It's one of the quotes that really struck me in my struggle was that the stars shine brightest when it's darkest outside. So, when it's really dark, you can see things that you wouldn't otherwise see. And similarly for me, I saw things in my own life that I had not recognized or honored prior to that point. Steve, would you be willing to share a little more about your story? Sure. So what was the pressure that was building up prior to the decision that maybe dying was better than living? So the pressure that was building up for me was I was in a job that from the outside looked like a really great job. Um, I was well respected for the work that I could do. I was well paid for what I was doing. And there were lots of people around me saying, I really wish I had your job not knowing how much pain it was causing me. And then to- Wait a minute, pause kinda... there. Pause there. What was the pain that job was causing you? What was the price you were paying to appear successful? Denying who I really was. Doing work that I was really good at, but had did not have my heart in not expressing the artist within me. So what happened? <laughs> well, what part of what happened? Um, me, fortunately, um, I, minutes before I was out, I realized that taking a permanent solution for a temporary problem wasn't the what I needed to be doing. All right, I'm going to invite you to back us up a couple of hours. However far you need to back us up so that we can be in the room with you, Steve. And I'm going to invite you if you're willing to take us into those moments for two reasons. One is because this is the place that we want people to never go to. And the other is from a coaching perspective, if you can take us into the story, we're going to emotionally connect with you in a way that we won't connect with you if you're telling us about the event. Does that make sense? Sure. Yep. So what happened mm -hmm. was I'd been at this job, I don't know, close to five years. And uh, about a year previously, I had made a major error in a calculation that was, that changed my reputation at work dramatically. And I just kind of was holding on by my fingertips, um, just trying not to make any mistakes and kind of toe the line. But it was also making me really sick. In fact, I got ended up getting whooping cough. And which was bad enough that when I would cough, I'd literally pass out. And so I had to take some time off in order to recover. And when I I was off for about three weeks or so, three or four weeks, getting still pressure from work that I needed to return and do the work that I was supposed to be doing and so forth. 
So I show back up at work and my boss doesn't speak to me for like three or four days. She just kind of glares at me as uh, we're passing. And when she finally does talk to me, it's to pull me into her office and seated neck in the corner was the HR director and she can yeah. proceeded to read a long list of things that I was doing wrong, some of which was accurate, some of which was totally fabricated. Um, and I felt about a quarter of an inch tall and just did not see any possibility for continuing that. My, my whole identity as to who I was and what I could do was like totally erased. And uh, I just felt that it would be better for me, for my family. And I'm the father of four children. So um, that it, the world would be better off without me. And so um, I was going to uh, take an extra large dose of the medicine that I was taking. Um, and it was just minutes before that happened, I was in, my wife had seen the signs, knew that I was not doing well. Um, she took, was took the kids to school and left me at home just because that's, and I told her I was okay, that I'd go into work. But while, before she left, she hid all the medicine in the house. And, uh -huh. but I still had a prescription to call in. <laughs> So um, I called it in, but not, and she, I found out recently that she actually called the local pharmacy, one that was just down the street and said, don't fill this prescription. But I called the one that was closer to work, which was quite a ways away from where we lived. And uh, they, she hadn't contacted them. And so I was going to go pick it up from them when, and I, went into the restroom on my way to go pick it up and that's when the thought came into my mind don't take a permanent solution for a temporary problem and that was enough to get me to pause and realize that maybe the situation that I was in was not as severe as as I was at, at, in that moment thinking so I didn't go through with it, but I was literally minutes away from it. So. so when did you talk to your wife about it or have you? Oh, I've talked many times about it. Um, but around that moment, it was, uh, I don't know, it's probably, I'm, I'm sure I went home after work that night and talk to her about it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one of the things that I struggle with is when things are not going well, I do some pretty significant insomnia. And so I'm sure I didn't sleep well that night. Um, and things just kind of opened up and I kept going and um, it was a difficult, Difficult moment, and I didn't say anything about it, tell anyone this story, other than my wife and maybe my kids, until about a year and a half ago when I started speaking publicly about this. And, uh, so tell us about that. Where was your first event that you actually broke the silence and spoke publicly about this? So I was actually in my Toastmasters club. Wow. <laughs> so, um, well, I was... I, okay, I mean, you know, I get Toastmasters. What was the response in your Toastmasters group? Well, that was a thing, and I knew I was like totally playing craps, so, you know, that I had no idea what the, how people were going to respond. It's one of the reasons I hadn't talked about it for years. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I'd talk about um, depression and I'd kind of dance around the subject, but I wouldn't. 
Oh, dancing with elephants. I'm an expert. <laughs> yeah, so, but I had no idea how people would respond, but they were incredibly supportive. And it was honestly, just being able to talk about it was life-changing. And to, to have people be so receptive and open and encouraging and inspired by what I was sharing, that it just, it made a huge difference for me. Then what happened? Um, well, it, it was part of a, the international speech contest in 2018. And so I spoke, I actually, my club, amazingly, I spoke, I delivered the same speech three or four times in practice preparation for competing at higher levels. Um, and they all were incredibly supportive throughout. And then I spoke at the area level, then I spoke at the district, the division level, um, and did it continue past the division level. But uh, just having the opportunity to share my story to different people and so huge okay so i'm just going to pause you for just a second because steve the number of people who never ever 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 tell their story is a significant number i mean statistically significant right the number of people who tell their story but never learn to tell it well is a statistically significant number. The number of people who do what you did and tell your story in a group that could help you tell it better, Steve, you're a rare breed. There are very few people who've ever done what you did. And to allow yourself to progress so that more and more people heard your story, this is very unique. And so I just want to give you a pause. I want to give everyone a chance to say, woohoo! Because I'll guarantee you there are people listening to this who have never given themselves permission to start to tell their story. Right. And the thing that I can say about that is that the cost of not telling your story is actually much higher than the cost of telling your story. Because when you tell your story, even if people, and one of the things that happened in the last time I told my story it did not, was not as well received and it wasn't, it was kind of traumatic for me. Um, oh, and I had to. More. We want to know this story. This is the juicy one. Come on. <laughs> so I'm at the division level. No, district level. No, division level. So the way things go in Toastmasters is you have your club, then you have your area, then you have your division, then you have your district, okay? okay. So I'm at, the, I'm at the division level. All right. And it was just very, very formal and, and kind of automated the, the way that, it, and, I, and I'm a huge fan of Toastmasters. It, was, it has literally been life-saving for me. Yeah, and, and that day it me. felt cold. <laughs> yeah, it felt very cold. And um, just did not feel heard which one of the things about suicide and depression is not being heard is like that it, it's important the worst thing yeah i i yeah, um, the elephant is i don't hear you you know like horton hears a who yo know, most of us are not hortons we don't we can't hear the who and everybody wants to be heard so on that level if you didn't feel heard on that day Steve, this is a big deal. That was a huge deal. And I didn't realize how big of a deal it was until after I'd gone home and I went on one of my walks that I, I go walking pretty much every day. And I was walking across a bridge in town and the thought came to my mind, I wonder if it's tall enough. <laughs> and there was a freeway running underneath it and I'm thinking about taking another way out. 
And I'm like, okay, and I've done enough work that I'm like, okay, I need to stop and like figure out what's going on here and, and, and kind of reassess what's happening. Because one of the things that I've learned about suicide is that, and, and that kind of thought is that it's, it's like a big um, pause button, right? It's saying stop and take, um, take a sense an assessment of what's going on and and step back and so i stepped back and i'm like okay so what's going on and, and the thought that came to my mind was you know if i'm not going to be heard and there are times that i'm not going to be heard it's just kind of the way that things work out and, and it wasn't you know there was no maliciousness there was no um, ill intent or anything it was just the way it, it worked out and so the thought that came to my mind for me at that time was, well, if I'm not always going to be heard, what can I do? And the thought, the response was, then I will be there to hear other people. Wow. So my intent is to be there so that when others tell their story, that they feel heard and, and know that they're not alone. does that land for you, Steve, that your mission in the world is to help other people feel heard? Well, knowing how important it was and is for me to be heard, and knowing how both life-saving and life-changing it has been for me to be heard, that when I have been able to do that for other people. And most of the time when I'm talking to people and they're sharing their story, it's not life threatening, at least not in the same way it was for me, but it is, can be life changing because being heard, like profoundly heard, like really heard is, is a real gift because we oftentimes are so caught up in all that's going around us. Oh, being busy. <laughs> Right. That really, truly being heard, you know, is kind of a rarity, you know, so, and especially when we have the courage to share our story, to, you know, to be open about the things that are troubling us. Okay. So this is pretty important to me. And so Steve, thank you for being willing to share your story and to share your mission. Because if you want to be heard, let's talk about what it takes to bring a mission into the world, because that's what this segment is about. Please keep your mic open. Steve, when it comes to getting your message heard on a bigger stage in a louder way, amplifying it, what's your biggest challenge? Well, you and I have had an, a little email exchange behind the scenes. Mm. about this and well, we talked about my we talked about a bunch of things what I want to know is from your perspective right now today when it comes to getting your message into the world what's your biggest challenge so the thing that I realized in um, honestly signing up and registering for this event was that I can, that it's quote unquote safe for me to watch from the same sidelines, you know, that I don't have to be vulnerable. I don't have to expose myself. I don't have to, you know, tell my story, which while I am grateful for the opportunity to share my story, it's also something that comes at a cost because it's not an easy story to share. I mean, it's not, uh, there are emotional hits that I get when I share the story, no matter, um, and I've done a lot of healing. And so, I mean, I've got, I'm in a much, much, much better place, but still being that vulnerable, that exposed um, is risky. And I don't know, you know, how well it's going to be received. I don't know how people are going to respond to it. 
All right, I'm gonna wave a magic wand and ask you a different question. Okay. When it comes to bringing your mission, your message into the world, Steve, what's your biggest fear? That I won't be heard. What's your biggest frustration when it comes to bringing your message into the world? That, hmm. So the, the biggest frustration is that there is, are the times when people don't get what I'm sharing and, and why this is so important. And, you know, my story is, you know, kind of um, sensational. <laughs> In that, I mean, not everybody talks about suicide, you know. Not everybody. Oh, and trust lots me. of people. We don't. Yeah, as a as a community, as a culture, as a country, we don't talk about suicide. I get you. And and so a lot of people, you know, they discount their own story because it's not, you know, this or that or whatever, you know. And and it, the thing is, is that I believe is that we all have a story to tell. You know, and it might not be about a bridge or about a bottle or about whatever, but it's about something. And we've all gone through our difficult times. We've all faced our, our own struggles. Mm -hmm. And that if we are willing to, to share our story, to open up and, and to share that light with somebody else, then it makes their journey easier. And then if we all changed in the way that People like Brene Brown talks about, you know, vulnerability and, and you know, having the, we all want the other person to take the first step, but, it, but in order for that to happen, we've got to be willing to take the step ourselves. And so, um, so like right now, I'm being much more vulnerable than I anticipated I would be doing. I was not planning at 1030 at night to, you know, be sharing sharing my story about this, but- oh, Trust um, me, <laughs> before I got this concept, Steve, that 24 hours was the important number, it was not my intention to be here at this time of night on the East Coast, which you are, um, and be still talking. I mean, I get it, but here's the deal, Steve. You stepped up. You not only stepped up, you raised your hand and you said, I'll talk. And so because you stepped up, you showed up, you raised your hand, you said, I have a mission, I have a message, and I have no idea how to get it into the world. And that's what we want to talk about tonight. So, Steve, will you receive some gratitude from me? Will you receive some appreciation from me? Absolutely, yes. Ah, oh, good. Now, here's the really telling question. And everyone who knows me is going to spasm. Will you receive from coaching, some coaching from me? Sure, yeah. Steve, what if you came at life, and by the way, thank you. What if you came at life from the belief system that everyone in the world was waiting to hear the message that it's okay to talk about? It? Yeah, well, honestly, that's where I've been getting to is, is just, and the thing that I realized for myself is that in general, it's not my concern about whether it it shows up as my concern about whether other people are hearing me and receiving what I have to share. But to be, if I were to be completely honest with you and with myself, the person that I'm really worried about not hearing or receiving it is is my own self. Is that if I if I accept and allow myself to show up and whether 
I mean, it's awesome when other people hear me, but if I can be there for myself when it doesn't go, like I hope, you and know. You could be there for yourself, period. Right. What would be different in your life, Steve, if you could be there for yourself, period? Well, I can tell you how much of a difference it's already made. And I'm probably, I mean, I'm about, I mean, there, there's no way to really measure it, but, but one of the things that has helped me dramatically since that time seven years ago was learning to be there for myself, to make me a priority in my life rather than, you know, at the last of the, the list of things to do. I'm going to name an elephant in the room. I just saw an elephant. Are you willing to go there with me? Sure. What would happen in your life, Steve, if you were willing to allow your mission and your message to also bring you money? Yeah. Well, that would be powerful and it, it would be very fulfilling and, um, and what's in the way? What's your biggest challenge? <laughs> um, myself. <laughs> Believing that my message matters, that my message makes a difference. That it's not just about, <laughs> here's the rub, is that my message is, my story is about me, but the message is not about me. <laughs> That's everyone's rub who's, on this journey with me. So your message, your mission, and your tribe, they all matter, Steve. They absolutely matter. What would happen if you gave yourself permission to be ready? Well, I'd be able to remove the brakes and um, you know, move forward doing what I have been resisting for quite some time. All right. So, Steve, I'm going to make you an offer. Everyone in the chat just got the link to my three-day event at the end of August. It is on how to create your core four stories, how to pull those out so you can build out a signature talk how to take one of them and both develop and deliver a seven minute mission launching message. And then how to have your intro so solid, you can stand on it. That's the promise of the three day event at the end of August. For everyone else, there's a link in the chat. They can come to this three day event for $47. It's probably you know, 1500, maybe more in value. The bottom line is I'm charging $47. Steve, if you're willing and ready to show up and to go through the process of finding your core four stories on the difference you want to bring into the world, developing and delivering and having it recorded, your seven minute main mission launching message and your intro so that when people meet you, they know who you are and they get you so that they will want to connect with you. It's not that they're going to buy from you, but they're going to get you. So they want to connect with you and then they will introduce you to their network. That's the difference between what do I have to sell and what's my mission and what's my message in the world. So if you, Stephen, you don't have to broadcast it to the world. If you are willing to accept the gift of coming to this three-day event for free, then simply send me an email. I know, and to Katie, I know you have these email addresses and we'll get you the link so that you can show up. Because here's what I know. There are no coincidences. And you showed up this week 
and you push back on me. And because of that pushback, I created a very, very clear mission statement for the suicide prevention movement. And if you had not been willing to step up, speak out and push back, that might never have been written. So step one is for you to say, oh my God, I changed the world because I was willing to say it felt like a slap in the face. Step two, oh my God, I changed the world because I was willing to unmute, raise my hand and talk on the suicide prevention show. That's step two is acknowledging yourself for what you've done. Step three is saying, oh my God, I want to work with Jackie some more. And she's giving it to me for free. And I don't usually do that. So it's up to you. It's an offer. You know how to do the email. And for everyone else on this call, instead of $9.97, it's $47 and the link is in the chat box. And all I can do at this moment in time is say thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for being part of the journey. Steve, everyone who's been here. Oh my God. Thank you. And please share. And Steve, I really appreciate you. You've done what very few people are willing to do. And so just in case you didn't heard me, just in case you didn't hear me, the first three times I said it, Steve, you've done what very few people are willing to do. I have interviewed multiple people. I've been doing this 24 hours over two days for crying out loud. And the number of people who are willing to stand up and speak out is very small. You're a rare breed, Steve. Happy to support you in any way that I can. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. You're welcome. And for everyone else, yourtribematters.com. That's where you will find the information about the three-day event where we build out your core four stories. We help you develop and deliver your seven-minute mission launching message and then help you get your intro so solid you can stand on it. We couldn't do this without you. Steve, we couldn't do this without you. For everyone who has shown up, who has been part of our journey, we're not going to quit. We're not going to quit. We're going to continue to develop whatever it takes so that you go from beating yourself up, needing intervention, to beating your own drum into the realm of prevention where we don't ever have to think that you're going to go towards the ledge. That's our mission. That's the movement of the Suicide Prevention Society. The Facebook group is being launched. And you guys are nothing short of amazing. Thank you.